I'm Pat Nelligan. I'm an anesthesiologist and intensive care specialist. How many times have you been told that your body is 50 or 60% water, but you never spring a leak when you cut yourself? Where's all this water? And what is dissolved in it and why? What is the difference between plasma, extracellular fluid and blood? What are electrolytes? And why do we have different electrolytes in different body compartments? And what happens when we bleed? Why do people seize when their sodium is low and arrest when the potassium is high? And what the hell is acid-base balancing? How come nobody understands it? What are intravenous fluids? And what fluids do we give when and at what rate? Familiar questions. Unsatisfactory answers? I've been teaching fluids, electrolytes, and acid-base chemistry for decades, and I'm always astonished how poor the underlying knowledge of healthcare practitioners is. I put this course together to cover all these topics and more. Join me on a journey from basic chemistry to complex critical care conundrums. Yes, some of this stuff will be really nerdy. Some of it will be radically different from what you learned in college or medical school, but it all makes sense. So let's start. The course has four parts. Part one is the basics and principles of intravenous fluid therapy, including a lot of physiology. Part two are specific fluid and electrolyte abnormalities and how to treat them. Part three is all about acid-base chemistry. And part four is heavy-duty clinical stuff, including shock monitoring, nutrition, and the complications of fluid therapy. The target audience is really anyone undergoing foundation training in acute medicine or surgery, anesthesiology, and critical care. This is for doctors and nurses and allied health professionals, but it would also be a very useful refresher course for doctors who are already trained and established in clinical practice. So pretty much that means you if you have found this by Google. A note on style. There is a terrible tendency to use different measurement tools in different jurisdictions, and I've made some decisions about how I'm doing this. Um, uh, we will use metric measurements where applicable, and that's liters, kilograms, grams, and degrees Celsius. I'm also going to use millimeters of mercury um, for respect to pressure with blood gases rather than kilopascals, um, and that's a personal choice. And then I'm going to use millimoles per liter with respect to quantity and milliequivalents per liter with respect to charge. I'll also talk about milliosmoles per liter. A couple of disclaimers. English in this course will be transatlantic and I apologize in advance for my spellings if anyone gets offended. Um, all of the content in these tutorials was generated by me and there will be mistakes. And these tutorials are not meant to guide clinical practice. I don't take any responsibility for your actions. All cartoons and images and music are copyrighted by me and they're available online for personal study purposes only. Please respect my copyright. A final disclaimer. I'm basing this course on what is my view the best available science and information that will make sense to learners. A lot of this material is controversial. I will deal with some of the controversies, but I will not repeat gobbledygook. And what I mean by that is the same pseudoscience that many of us learned at medical school. If it doesn't make sense to me after all these years, it doesn't make sense. I also reserve the right to make up my own terminology. And if you use it subsequently, please give me credit. The course, part one. Part one. There are 13 tutorials in part one of the course with a couple of supplementary tutorials that I think you will find helpful. I've divided part one into three realms or modules. This starts with a module known as the basics. The first tutorial directly follows this and it involves some basic chemistry that I think you will need. Then we will go on to explore water and concentrations, salts, osmosis, osmolality and electrolyte distribution. Once we've covered the first module, you will understand a lot about fluids in the body and how intravenous fluids are put together and used. We will then need to put all that information to use. The middle section of the course will look at some pathophysiology that I consider absolutely essential to anybody working in hospital medicine or in critical care or emergency medicine. The stress response, critical illness and resuscitation fluids, and the macro circulation and blood loss. 
The third module will explore some advanced physiology and how it impacts um, intravenous fluids and particularly what happens under anesthesia. And this will involve venous return, the microcirculation, albumin and colloids, and volume kinetics. Finally, I will do a bonus episode that covers the monitoring of fluids in terms of volume.